Welcome. On this video, we will be taking a look into the idea of how can we apply the isosceles triangle theorem to solve some problems. Let's take a look at the first example that we have here. The first thing that we always want to do is let's label the diagram. Let's see what information do we know about this problem. Well, the first given is that PQ is congruent to PR. Let's put that on our diagram. So PQ is right here and PR is right here. So I know that those two sides are congruent to each other. But notice that if those two sides are congruent to each other, then we have an isosceles triangle here. If we have an isosceles triangle there, then I know that opposite angles are congruent to each other. So let's put that on a diagram. So therefore, what we have here, opposite of those marks are going to be congruent to each other. Let's take a look at the next given. The next given is that TR is congruent to TS. So TR is congruent to TS. So let's have it in there. And again, notice that we have another isosceles triangle here. Those two sides are congruent. Therefore, the whole triangle is an isosceles. And if that's the case, then I know that opposites are congruent to each other. So therefore, this angle, angle R, will be congruent to angle S. And that's it. That's all the information that we know within this diagram. Now, what do we want to do? We want to see if the following statements are true. So let's start with the first statement. Is it true that ST and QP are parallel to each other? Well, where are they? We want to see if ST, which we have here on the bottom, is parallel to QP, which we have them here. Now let's think about this for a second. If those two sides are said to be parallel to each other, we have to show that we have congruent angles, either in the form of corresponding, alternate interior, or alternate exterior. Well, let's consider this to be some kind of a transversal. So if QP is parallel to TS, let's consider this line to be some kind of a transversal. Well, if that is said to be a transversal, then notice that we have two congruent angles in here. Angle Q is congruent to angle S. But how so? There's a bridge between those two angles. And that bridge is in here. These two angles notice that they have a different mark. But you might also notice that these are vertical angles. So if they are vertical angles, then they are congruent to each other. And now notice that there's a big transitive property within this diagram. Angle Q is congruent to angle R. And angle R is congruent to the right-hand side, the, I guess, angle SRT. And SRT is congruent to angle S. So therefore, by transitive property, we can say that angle Q and angle S are congruent to each other. And more importantly, notice that they are alternate interior angles. So we can say that because angle Q is congruent to angle S and they are alternate interior angles, comma, then it is true that ST is parallel to QP. Now let's take a look at the second statement here. Is it true that ST is congruent to QP? Let's start by identifying them. ST, we have them right here at the bottom, and QP, we have it here on the top. Now we want to show if they are congruent to each other. Well, notice that the angles which are opposite to those sides are congruent to each other. And that's enough information. If that's the case, then we can claim that ST is congruent to QP. So we can say that this is true. Whoops. Let's say that this is true because angles PRQ are congruent to angle SRT. Now let's take a look at the last statement. We want to show if angle T is congruent to angle P. 
Let's go back to the diagram. Where are those angles? Those angles can be found here, angle P and angle T. Now, what do we know about the other angles within this diagram? Well, we have already shown that angle Q and angle R on the left hand side are congruent. And also the other two angles on the right hand side, they're all congruent. All those four angles are congruent to each other. Remembering that the sum of the interior angle is 180, then angle P and angle T are going to be congruent to each other as well. And remember that we call that the third angle congruency theorem. So we can say that by the third angle congruency theorem, we have that angle T is congruent to angle P. Remember that the sum of all interior angles is 180. And if within the triangle on the left hand side and the triangle on the right hand side, we have two angles within each triangle that are congruent to each other, then of course what's left over is going to be equivalent. In this case, what's left over is angle P and angle T. That takes care of the first example. Let's take a look at another example now. So we're going to tackle this example the same way as we did the other example. Let's start by just analyzing the givens and then we'll see what information do we have after that. So let's take a look at the first statement. Angle side, side PO is congruent to QO. So where's that at? So PO is right here and QO is right here. Well, notice that I have two congruent sides. Therefore, this triangle that I'm drawing here, that's an isosceles triangle. And if that's an isosceles triangle, then I know that opposite angles are congruent to each other. So therefore, angle one and angle two are congruent to each other. So let's do that in there. Angle P and angle Q are congruent to each other. Let's take a look at the next statement. RO is congruent to SO. So RO, we have it here. SO, we have it here. I can notice that we have an isosceles triangle here. So here we have another isosceles triangle. And if we have an isosceles triangle, then opposite angles of the congruent sides are congruent to each other. So let's do that. Let's erase that. So therefore, oh, let me not make the same marks. They should be double marked because they're different. And opposites are congruent. So angle R is congruent to angle S. So now that we have all that information in there, let's actually take a look at the question. We are also given some extra information here. We know that angle one is equivalent to 40 degrees. The objective is to find the values for angle two, seven, five, and six. So let's take it one at a time. Let's concentrate on angle two. Well, angle two is pretty straightforward. Angle two is also 40 degrees. We have already stated that angle one and angle two are congruent. Then angle two is 40. Now let's move on to angle seven. Well, for angle seven, notice that we have a triangle here. Angle one, angle two, and angle seven are all part of a triangle. So if angle two is equivalent to 40 degrees, then therefore angle seven, the way that we can find that is by just doing very basic algebraic operation here. So it's going to be 180 minus 40 minus 40. So that's equivalent to 100 degrees. So let's put that on our diagram. So angle seven, now we know that that's 100 degrees. Cool. So if angle seven has a value of 100 degrees, then notice that this angle that we have here at the bottom, it's also 100 degrees. They're, altern uh, they're vertical angles. And that kind of information is what we need to solve for angle five. Because notice that, let's call this angle O. Uh, by that, I'm calling this angle O. So let's call this angle O. Notice that angle O plus angle S plus angle R, that's equivalent to 180 degrees. They're inside of a triangle. But we know what angle O is. Angle O is equivalent to 100 degrees. 
So angle O plus angle S plus angle R is equivalent to 180. So if that's the case, notice that if we subtract 100 to both sides, now we know that angle S plus angle R is 80 degrees. But now let's think about this for a second. We have already stated that angle five and angle six are congruent, which in this case, that's what I'm calling angle S and angle R. If they are congruent to each other and their sum is equivalent to 80 degrees, then each of those angles must be 40 degrees. They need to have the same value, two values that if you add by itself is equivalent to 80, so that's 40. So now we know that angle S is 40 and angle R is 40 as well. So there we have it. Now we know that angle 5 has a value of 40 degrees and we know that angle 6 has a value of 40 degrees as well. So let's put that on a diagram. So this angle it's of 40 degrees and this angle it's of 40 degrees. Now the last thing that we want to show is, is it true that PQ and SR, are they parallel to each other? Well, where are they on my diagram? Here we have it, that's PQ, this is SR. One thing to notice is that angle one as is of 40 degrees, and we also notice that angle R is of 40 degrees. Then notice that by alternate interior angles, because if those are the sides that I'm concentrating on, then I can think of this line as being my transversal. Then by alternate interior angles, then P and R, PQ and SR are parallel to each other. So that's my last statement. PQ is parallel to SR by alternate interior angles. And the alternate interior angles that are congruent to each other, it was angle one and angle six. Hello, if you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.